Hi, hello, how are you? It is I. And this is a little bit of a follow-up to the video I made about my journey as a warlock. I think it was something like the title. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to take you back to 2006, I'm going to say. 2006. The internet is still not what it is today. Um, social media is definitely not what it is today. And, uh, you really just kind of got all your information from what people told you. You didn't really go look it up yourself or search things out. So, with that in mind, 2006, I was, I would be 17 in 2006. Yeah. And a senior in high school. Well, depending on the time of the year, I could have been a sophomore. Anywho. I mean, a, a sophomore, a junior. Anywho. I'm going to say this is when I was a senior. And <laughs> I had already been, you know, practicing magic at this point for a couple of years. And I had already been researching magic for even longer, since 2002. So I was pretty confident in what I was doing. I was, you know, assembling a practice. Still didn't have firm foundations, but I did have one. Um, <clears throat> at this time, I was just a mystic. Uh, that's what I called myself, just a mystic. Uh, not a witch, not a pagan, anything like that. Just a mystic. A seeker of spiritual truths. A practitioner of magic and I had this friend who was a year below me and she brought in this book um, I have the book let's see right here this book right here um, would have been it Michelle Ballinger's Vampires in Their Own Words. And this may have been 2007. Anywho, I was a senior in high school. And anyway, this book was uh, something that she brought in. And she was very vocal about being um, into vampires and all about vampire culture, modern vampire lifestyle, uh, all of that. And to me, it seemed, you know, like an extension of her gothness. Um, it, it, it just seemed role play. And I may be wrong, but that's how it seemed. But I was still intrigued and I thought it was fun, but I do remember kind of rolling my eyes a little bit because I thought it was such a cliche in the goth culture to immediately love vampires, flock to vampires. Uh, want to be a vampire and so I remember really rolling my eyes at her and being like whatever and I really did not give it much thought but I did flip through some of the book <laughs> um, this is a good book by the way and should be standard reading for anyone who's interested in vampirism so as is all like her complete works all of her stuff but um anywho so I remember just being very dismissive and judgmental of that and you know at the time when it came to like magical supernatural uh, entities I was really into mermaids as a child like obsessively and also elves as I got a little older so at this time that was that was my focus I was really into elves and mermaids and I didn't, uh, I mean, I liked vampires. Who doesn't like vampires? But I liked vampires, but I, it just, it was not my obsession. It was not my thing. I, I, you know what I mean? That wasn't, it wasn't my, that was not my journey at that time. So flash forward to after high school, like two years after, we'll say. So 2009. And I come across 
No, it would be 2008. I come across this book. Gothcraft. What's funny is this book came from the same person that I was just speaking of who had the vampire book in high school. She had this book and I was like, this is awesome. So she shoplifted one for me. This is not the actual copy that was shoplifted. I gave that away a long time ago. And I don't condone shoplifting. But um, this book was given to me by the same individual. And um, I've always been self-identified as a goth and loved the goth subculture uh, and the punk anti-culture and all that. But um, obviously magic and witchcraft really lends itself to that path. Um, Satanism, all kinds of differentiating beliefs, right? Um, lend themselves to the goth subculture. And <laughs> there is a section in here about uh, vampires. And it really struck me because I guess I was closer to being ready to hear its message. But mostly because at the time I was experiencing things that I couldn't explain. So I was doing a lot of chakra work. And I was really getting into my psychometry, which I've talked about in a video. But I realized that whenever I was around certain individuals, in my mind, like, in, like just without any provoking, I would imagine sucking energy from them. Like I would see colors coming off their body into my body. And at first I thought it was, this was those people doing that. Like they were pushing energy onto me, you know? But it didn't feel that way. And it activated like my psychic sense of taste, which I had also never really experienced. And it was just bizarre. And I didn't like it and it felt intrusive. So I kept trying to fight it. And this went on for a very long time where I would be out in public, I would be at work, it, just random, just at random. I would be feeding on people's energy and it became very sexual in some instances where it was like I was feeding on their sexual energy, like their fresh sexual frustration or their pent up sexual energy, like energy that wasn't being expressed properly. And a lot of the times it was heart chakra energy because we do not express that part of ourselves very well. Or it was sexual because again, a lot of people do not express that part of themselves very well. And it's like I was taking it from them. And I think it was helping them, but it was also helping me. Like it was nourishing in a way, it felt good. But again, it felt very intrusive, very unethical, very not right hand path magic, right? And so I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I, I, well, I, don't know what's under, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I'm doing that this is rude and so I just I've, I've, I've fought it for years for years so. well around this time I got into the concept of other kin um, with books by Lupa and she's amazing she has a book called a field guide to other kin um, if you don't know what other kin are do yourself a service and pick up that book um, or any book by her or just Google but other kin are something that just hit me really hard at the time. And I remember thinking, am I elf kin? Am I mer kin? Because again, I was mer kin. <laughs> if you know what that is, then you know. But um, I just, you know, I was really into mermaids and elves. So I thought I must be kin to them in some way. I, I have such a rapport with them. And it's true. And I still do. And I, I love those those entities. But it always felt weird, and it was like, you know, well, if I'm a Merkin, then I have to be a vicious one. And there was no thought process behind that. It's like I just knew that I had to be. And the same with the Elfkin. I remember being like, I have to be some kind of dark elf, because I, I don't fully fit in with what an Elfkin is. And also, there's so many little things that, you know, build up someone's view of something. But like I've always been a biter. <laughs> um, 
of people. <laughs> and, um, like in all instances. And anyway, I add that just because it, it comes up now in my mind. But yes, I, I just remember always fighting to try to understand this part of me. And to understand why I felt the need to, like, take energy um, that was not mine. And, you know, I was really hit as a child by the film The Green Mile. I saw it really young. And, you know, there's the guy in there that takes people's, like, sickness from them. Right? He pulls it from them and, like, spews it out in these black, like, flakes. And I remember that hitting me really hard. And I also remember reading a book about sin eating, which is predominantly an Irish Catholic practice. Um, it's not really practiced anymore, supposedly. But uh, anywho, I remember reading about sin eating as well, about someone who would willingly take on all of one's sins at the time of death of someone so that they could go to heaven. I remember that hitting me really hard too, just this concept of people who are taking negative energies, repressed energies, unwanted energies from a person. And I thought, that's what I'm doing. So there's got to be some some kind of information out there somewhere for me to explain this. So again, I've always been a reader. I've always been someone who's very literary. And so I just kept searching and searching and searching. And I could never find something that made sense. And then, you know, I started hearing about energy vampires and like how like in the bad sense right like we hear from a lot of mainstream pagan and witch books that these are people who are narcissistic and these are people who you know drain you and are exhausting and it, certainly those people exist and they're horrible we all know those kinds of people but i also remember kind of being upset that we called them vampires because i was like that's not that's not fair that's rude <laughs> Because I've always been someone who likes to redeem monsters and like horrific characters, which I think a lot of queer people do, because we usually identify with the monster or the evil queen or the bad person in a film or media. And somewhere along the way, 2013, 12, 14, I started thinking more about vampirism. And so I remember digging back into the books of Michelle Ballinger and a couple of other people like Father Sebastian or Sebastian. And um, it started to click for me more. But it was like I, I still just couldn't get past it, like my own judgment. However, at this time, I was also uh, frequenting clubs, uh, goth clubs and you know, role-playing as a vampire. <laughs> um, and and uh, participating in vampiric activities uh, of a sexual nature uh, in role-play. So it was like, it was all there. And it's like, I just couldn't admit it to myself. And it wasn't until six years ago. So 2000 and, what is that, uh, 15, 16? Um... I remember talking to Adam Morningstar, who's a phenomenal person on social media. Go follow the House of Morningstar um, on Facebook, on Instagram. Seriously, go seek out Adam Morningstar. He's a really remarkable individual. Um, he's, like, very wise for his age, too. It, um, but, and I say that as someone who's, like, I'm so old, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um... I remember having a conversation with him. This is, yeah, this was six years ago. Gosh. And, um, you know, we, we were talking about him and his experiences. And I don't know what happened. It's like it just, I guess I felt safe, which is an overarching theme for me in my life is not feeling that way. But I felt very safe, and so we started talking about how I've always been intrigued by the folklore of succubi and incubi. And it just, it just came out, it just clicked. Like right there, I was typing, we were messaging each other, and I just kind of came out of the coffin, I guess, to him, and was like, this is me, and this feels right, and this is who I am. And it's weird to kind of have an awakening 
this late, which it's so funny, like, thinking that, like, 26, 27 years old is late in life. It's not. But, <laughs> um, I just remember being, like, feeling really good about it. And I just felt open and safe. So I disclosed it to him. And, of course, he was very supportive. And we've maintained a relationship since, and he's really great. And, uh, yeah, that was just my first step. And I think it was because I was finally ready. Um, at that point in my life, I was, you know, it was a Saturn Returns moment. They call that, like, when you're 27, uh, 26. Saturn returns. So, it, and what I mean, and we could get into what that means, but basically it's a time of big change in your life, you know, um, at such a young age. And I just remember uh, being in such a, such a state of change and rebirth at that point in my life. Um, that was when I started making YouTube videos. That's when I came out as uh, having Hinduism in my path um, on Facebook my first I Have a Secret video. And, uh, yeah, I felt very empowered at that time and filled with creative energy. And then here comes this new thing in my path, which in itself is a lesson, right? Like, the minute you get to that kind of state of, like, change and rebirth and growth and you feel like you're at your zenith of what you've been working towards in your spiritual practice, this new thing worked itself in. To kind of complicate. But to help you reach new zeniths. And that thing for me was vampirism. And, uh, yeah, I've been so guarded about it on this channel and online, period. Which, it's funny, I I've not really been in the coffin. Like, I would talk about it to anyone who asked. I just wasn't broadcasting it. Um, which I know if you're a queer person, you can kind of understand what I mean. Because we don't always come out of the closet. We just kind of are ourselves and if you really ask then okay but otherwise why should I have to tell you um and that's kind of how I felt I haven't felt like I've intentionally hid vampirism um on this channel but I never made the videos because I just did not want the hate or the judgment but you know I'm in my 30s I don't care I'm at a point where I do not care. Like, and it's just growing more and more as I get older. You don't care what people think. And uh, that sounds like, you know, oh yeah, right, because everybody cares. And yeah, you still care. Everyone cares till the day you die. But it just lessens and lessens as you get older, I promise. Like, you just don't care. Like, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I do. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Go on then. Go away. And thank you. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. But, uh, anywho, yeah, it was, what was amazing too was when I really kind of like went before my gods, um, my ancestors, which, you know, following this channel, um, I work predominantly, not all, but predominantly with Celtic, uh, the Celtic pantheon. Um, but mostly in an Arthurian folklore slant. So, like, instead of the Morgan, I, I work with Morgan Le Fay. I work with the Lady of the Lake. Um, I work with Lancelot. I work with Guinevere. Um, but I do also work with Okma and Lou and Dagda. But anywho, I remember going before them and being like, this is me, this is who I am. Um, I don't want things to be weird. <laughs> But if my altar starts having like Celtic imagery and vampiric energy and imagery, I want that to mesh and be cool. <laughs> and I remember three deities in particular Lou, Morgan Le Fay, and uh, Ogma, which really shocked me, the god of Ogum, uh, coming to me and being like, well, we're vampiric, so it's all good, shorty. Like, what's good? And I felt so much comfort in that. And, uh, you know, it's been said before that Morgan Le Fay is a vampiric or, or a mermaid type of entity. That's so debatable. She's definitely a fairy, but it's de so debatable. 
Um, what shocked me the most was Ogma. Because Lou, Lou jumps in on everything, if you don't know. Lou is like a literally a jack-of-all-trades god. That's literally his thing. But <laughs> Ogma really shocked me. Um, but anywho, I just bring that up because vampiric influence is everywhere and in, in all cultures and throughout all time. Um, the ethics of vampirism we can talk about in another video. I just wanted to bring this up to kind of give you an idea of where it fit into the timeline of my life. Because the, the timeline of my life, Journey of a Warlike video, has been very popular on this channel. Um, the analytics of it continue to do well, and I appreciate that truly and sincerely. Um, so I just wanted to add this to it as an attachment. Um, but we can talk more about it. We can talk specifically about Incubus stuff. Um, although I don't know how we would do that without getting demonetized or like in trouble from YouTube, but um, we can talk about it somehow. Um, but yes, uh, I, I do not belong to just like how I do not belong to a a any kind of pagan or magical group or coven at the time of this recording. I do not belong to a vampire court or alliance or coven. Um, while I have belonged to a couple, several, a couple of um, magical groups of covens, I've never belonged to a vampire court or group. So, anywho, that's me. That's a little, a little bit of a jumbled story for you. Um, thank you very much for watching. And of course you can always follow my links down below to find me on other social media, including TikTok. And you can look at my merch over on Teespring, or you can book a reading with me in Terra Oga Maroons, um, in any divination form over on Facebook. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting and continuing to support this channel after so many years now. Um, thank you so much. And, Goodbye.